Hi everybody, welcome back. Something totally different today. Um, I was at a craft fair at the weekend and I sold some rainbow coasters that I'd made. Um, and the um, lovely client, lovely customer came back and excitedly asked me if I could make her some matching placemats. So that's what I'm gonna do. So they are kind of geometric patterns um, um, in a rainbow. So totally, totally different. So I thought I'd show you the, the process behind them. Um, so let me show you the colours I'm using. That's the wonderful rainbow of colours that I'm using. I am using um, Pepio Studio Acrylics, Iridescent Violet Blue, Red Blue and Orange, De La Rowney Cadmium Yellow Hue, um, Pepio Iridescent Green Yellow and Blue Green, and then Royal and Lang Nickel Dark Ultramarine blue um, I did add a tiny bit of white in it just to lighten it slightly knowing that it will darken as it dries then I've got Amsterdam ultramarine violet light and then for the purple it's mostly Amsterdam permanent blue violet but I've also added just a little bit of cobalt dark violet by Royal and Lang Nickel all of these paints are mixed with PVA glue and water and I'll put the recipe in the description of this video for you I have six table mats laid out here. You cannot see them all because it's it's they're, they're spread out too long. So you can see the central ones, but what I do in the center, I'm gonna be doing on all of them. So these are wooden boards. Um, they're wooden boards, they are table mats, and I bought them from B&M in the, um, the UK. Um, so they're perfect because they've got a really nice thick edge. They're nice and strong, so they're not going to flex. They're not going to bend. They had little rubber feet on, which I've peeled off. And then I've covered this in silver gaffer tape. That will stop the paint getting underneath and stop the resin getting underneath once they're resined. And then I have put a layer of gesso on the top just to, just to sort of soak into the wood to really prevent air coming up once once I pour the paint on so I don't get lots of air bubbles. Um, so it just primes it really. Um, so as I said, I've got six here, but you can't really see them all. I don't think you can. Right, I've got 10 amazing, amazing colours. I'm going to, I'm gonna do them in this order here. So it is the rainbow, but really the rainbow starts here and then the pinky colours I've put back to this end. So it is the rainbow, but I just feel that the rainbow in this in this order works better. I just prefer it. Um, I've got lots more paint. I mixed up a lot of paint um, and I put them into uh, plas uh, to paper cups so that I can then bend the cups to create a little funnel. So it's much easier to um, control. Now I might need to put, I think I'm going to, put some more i use yogurt pots as stands i think i'm going to put three under each because they're not very stable i tend to reuse as much as i can recycle as much plastic as i can in art so i you might have noticed when i do my uh, dutch pours i use shower gel bottles i use a lot of yogurt pots I eat a lot of this Greek yogurt and these make brilliant tubs because they've got lovely lids for mixing lots of lovely paint. So I've got 10 of these here mixed up with this rainbow of colour. What I've done on this table mat is done, drawn so that there is 20 gaps here because I'd like to put two lines of each colour on. If I just start pouring, I don't, I don't have any idea of how wide to have the gaps. So I, I, in order to get them all in, I've just done a rough, rough guide. So should I do lines on all of them or just use that as the guide? I think I'm just going to use that one as the guide. So if I swap them over, so I can see where it should be. Or is that too rough? Maybe I shouldn't. Right, 
Right, so I've now got lines on all six, so that's just going to give me a really good guide. I think I'm going to put them all together and pour them all at the same time. And then I'll separate them to let the paint run down the sides or add more if necessary. Right, so I'm going to start with the, the pinky, the iridescent pinky colour. So I'm going to pour a line just along that very top edge. So I'll start over here, you probably can't see this. Right, I'm not going to be tilting these, so one thing I need to bear in mind is I don't want loads and loads of paint. So I think if I put do the lines, then I will dab it with my finger. I'll maybe put slightly more on this edge one because I want it to go over the edge, but I would dab it into place so it will thin it out. I, might, I think I might do that afterwards. So next I'm going to go for the magenta. So I'm going to try and put the line of paint oh, in the centre between, oh, I'm going off course, between, in the centre of the two lines. I can't stretch. Right, that was so much more difficult than I was expecting because I was having, it was too far to reach. I was having to work out how my feet were gonna go and how I was gonna move in order to get from one side to the other. But I've done it, I'm happy. Um, here I misjudged my line and I was coming along and suddenly I was down on the wrong line. So you probably saw I just had to push the paint back up, all fine. So what I'm going to do now is just move the paint around. I'll add bits more paint to certain places, but I just want to move it all around just to try and get the paint to spread into these gaps. But I'd quite like to do it without having to add more paint because it's already quite thick paint on here. And that just means that it's going to take longer to dry and there is more chance of it cracking if I add too much more paint.
love them absolutely love them right so the next ones i'm going to do diagonal lines exactly the same but diagonally Right, these swirly ones are definitely going to be the most difficult. Um, I could put it on the, the on a cake stand and twirl it, but I think I am just going to do it freehand. Just look at that whole table of crazy, of bright, bright, bold. Oh my goodness, so happy. So these were the first ones I did. So can you see now that that slight unevenness between the lines just doesn't matter and doesn't show because I've totally wrecked it with the paintbrush. So if they are slightly uneven, it doesn't matter. I really like when you get little flecks of colour through um, and you can see the colours in some places are sort of bleeding into each other which I really like that the this dark blue is definitely bleeding slightly into the turquoise there and then the purple into that pink oh and look at that the blue and the turquoise together there so then these are the round ones um, I'm glad I did it freestyle free hands I just had to take my time and just I love how the way the color is just pulled through Oh, I'm so excited, so excited. I really hope this is, well, I'm sure it is what the customer wants because it's going to match the coaster she's already bought. But first time I've gone, I've gone bigger. First ever placemats. And the last but not least, the diagonal ones. What the client liked was that they all match, that they're all the same, but they're all a little bit different. So what a colourful, happy set of placemats so i'll be back when they're dry so they're now completely finished so um, i let them dry i have done three coats of resin i have um, put cork backing on them they are now done completely ready to be posted off to the customer um, let me show you so first thing i think you'll probably notice is the sparkle so i added um, some sparkly bits into the uh, resin that i've used um, it's called ignition dust. Um, if I think about it, I'll put the company I get it from in the description of this video. And it's you can see it's just beautiful. You need a tiny amount and it just gives this incredible sparkle. So I had the sparkle in the coasters. So I've matched everything, the, the colours, the sparkle, um, everything. Yeah, absolutely everything. Um, I'll show you the profile of them because then you'll get a sense of the of the of the resin. So there's something on there let me just brush that off um so you can see there's a beautifully smooth rounded edge to these um and you get that from doing the three coats of resin um i find if you just do one all the color um it sort of sticks to the edge oh there you go you can see it better there um it gets a very thin edge two coats is okay but three coats just gives this absolutely amazing glossiness um this thick thick resin and I yeah just love it um, and I think the more resin you use the more heat resistant this is as well um, so really happy that they're all there are there are six to go together they all match but they're all different um, and that's exactly what the customer wanted um, let me show you the back of them 
um, it's cork backing. Um, so I try and zoom in. Um, it's self-adhesive backing. It was in larger squares. So I put the, uh, the mat on the self-adhesive cork and then used a craft knife just to cut around the edge to give that, that absolutely perfect um, edge to it. Um, so there they are, all finished. Absolutely love them. They're bright, bold, colourful, happy, um, and I think they're going to a really good home. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, it's been a bit of a journey making these. I've enjoyed every second of it. Um, just looking forward to getting them in the post now and to the customer. Let me know what you think. Any thoughts you have about this process? Um, any comments? I'd love to hear from you. Great. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.